Great stuff. Question nine. It is given that f of theta is sine theta plus theta plus cos theta plus 60. Show that f of theta is cos theta. So it's a bit of an odd start, isn't it? Because we've got we've got six marks, but the question has two parts to it. It's a bit odd, isn't it, isn't it to break down a part one of a question and it have two distinct parts. It could almost have been a part one and a part two just, just there. So the first part is show that f of theta is cos theta. f of theta was sine theta plus 30 plus cos theta plus 60. Now, this is another show that. We've got to be thorough in our showing that. So sine theta plus 30 is that's sine a plus b, sine theta cos 30 plus cos theta sine 30. And cos theta plus 60 is cos a plus b, so that's cos a cos b minus sine a sine b, so that's 60 there. Right, now because this is a show that, I know at this point there's a temptation just to go straight for the calculator and, and kind of say, oh yeah, that's, that's oh, I've put the numbers in, clearly that's cos theta. But we've got to make sure that we really thoroughly show what we're trying to show. So cos 30 is root 3 over 2. Sine 30 is a half. Cos 60 is a half. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Now I think that line is vital. Because that line is the line that we show, that we've evaluated it all and we know how it simplifies. Because at that point, we can then write our next line. That bit cancels out that bit. Half plus a half gives us one cos theta as required. Okay, and that's our two marks done there. Now part B said, hence, show that f of 4 theta plus 4 f of 2 theta is equal to that thing there. This is massive, this second part of this question, and it's going to get really messy. f of 4 theta plus 4 f of 2 theta. Right. Um, we've got that f of theta is cos theta. That's crucial. That's the hence bit, so we're going to have to use that. So f of 4 theta is cos 4 theta. 4 f of 2 theta is 4 times cos 2 theta. Let's work on these bits a little bit. Cos 4 theta is, well how are we going to think about that? That is twice cos, that's, and let's, let's do a little bit of side work here. Cos 4 theta is cos 2 times 2 to the Okay, that seems to be the sensible way of going about this. We're wanting our answer to involve coses only. So let's see what we can do with the coses for that. We think back to our identities. We've got that cos 2 theta is cos squared minus sine squared. So if we place sine squared with 1 minus cos squared, that is 2 cos squared minus 1. So that is 2 cos squared 2 theta minus 1. That's an important point to have that in there. We're going to use that. So let's use that in our and I'm working out, that means that this equals 2 cos squared 2 theta minus 1 plus 4 cos oh. 2 theta. Right, we're getting there. We've gone from 4 theta down to things just involving 2 theta. Let's do the same thing again. Let's use the identity that says that cos 2 theta is um, 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So that's 2 times 2 cos squared theta minus 1, minus 1. Don't lose that minus 1 that was hanging around there. And that bit is squared, isn't it? Because it was cos squared 2 theta. So that's cos squared 2 theta there. Plus 4, 2 cos squared theta minus 1. 
Now there's nothing for it but to multiply out this bracket. It's not very nice, but we're going to have to just go for it and do it. We multiply out that bracket, we get 2 cos squared theta times 2 cos squared theta is 4 cos to the 4 theta. Minus 2 cos squared theta minus another 2, so minus 4 cos squared theta plus 1. We've also got a minus 1 here. We've also got plus 8 cos squared theta and a minus 4 hanging around at the very end. So, multiplying out every bracket, we've got 8 cos to the 4 theta. That's reassuring because we wanted to get an 8 cos to the 4 theta. Take away 8 cos squared theta plus 2. Take away 1 plus 8 cos squared theta minus 4. And again, we've been really careful with all that, but we've got 8 cos to the 4 theta. That bit cancels out that bit. Plus 2. Take away 1, that's 1. Take away 4, these would be minus 3. And that was what we were supposed to show. It took quite a bit of doing, didn't it? Um, it's using, using this identity a couple of times, carefully multiplying out the brackets in the midst of that. Um, you could have got there using the sine squared minus cos squared identity, but that takes a little bit more substituting in figuring things in. Right. Um, the question went on. We've, we've done the main part of it. Hence, determine the greatest and least values of that horrible thing as theta varies. So, part two. <coughs> We're looking at the greatest and least values of 1 over f of 4 theta plus 4 f of 2 theta plus 7. Oh, well, actually, that first bit, f of 4 theta plus 4 f of 2 theta, we've worked that out as 8 cos to the 4 theta minus 3. That's 1 over 8 cos to the 4 theta minus 3 plus 7. So that is just 1 over 8 cos to the 4 theta plus 4 minus 3 plus 7 gives us a plus 4 then. And we're after the greatest and least values of that expression. Well, cos to the 4 theta is a funny thing, isn't it? Because cos theta goes between plus or minus 1. But cos to the 4 theta doesn't do that. Because you're, it's an even power. So anything negative will become positive. So that bit actually varies between 0 and 1. Cos the 4 theta is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1 for all values of theta. That's what it's varying between. So if we think about the values that we get, if cos to the 4 theta equals 0, these are the extreme values, aren't they? If it equals 0, we've got 1 over 12. If cos to the 4 theta equals 1, then we haven't got 1 over 12, have we? I've got, I've got nothing in the way around. Sorry. If cos to the 4 theta equals 0, we've got 0 plus 4 on the bottom, so we've got 1 over 4. If that equals 1, we've got 8 plus 4 on the bottom, so we have got 1 over 12. So there are our two extreme values. Now, the, the, the mark scheme didn't care whether you specified greatest or least. They're the two extreme values, because because the four between those would just give us values between those. So that's the least, and that's the greatest, but you didn't need to specify that. You just needed to write down those two values. So we go to the very final four marks, which was a real mess. The last four marks said solve and assign 12 alpha plus 30 plus cos 12 alpha plus 60 plus 4 sine 6 alpha plus 30 plus 4 cos 6 alpha plus 60 equals 1. Oh, uh, 4 
alpha between 0 and 60. So that's quite an important point to get there. Right, what on earth are we doing with this? Well, we seem to have two expressions that remind us of the very start of the question, if we can still remember that from the distant past. And the start of the question said, f of theta is sine theta plus 30. So actually that first bit there, sine theta plus 30, what was it, plus cos theta plus 60, that bit looks like that is f of um, 12 alpha. That's what it is, isn't it? And so that is cos 12 alpha. That first bit, because we were told it was even cos of, um, cos of that. This next bit is 4 times cos 6 alpha. And that's got to be equal to 1. So that's an important first step to use. That's using part 1 of the question to get it into that format. And then we notice that actually what we've got is we've got f of, f of 12 alpha plus 4 f of 6 alpha. And we notice that that appeared in part 1 of the question. F of 4 theta plus 4 f of 2 theta was 8 cos the 4 theta minus 3. So replace theta with 3 alpha, and we've actually got 8 cos to the 4, 3 alpha minus 3 equals 1. So that was the crucial bit. That they only gave one mark for getting to that point. But that was that was the key thing to get. So we need to solve this now. If we rearrange this, we've got cos to the 4, 3 alpha is equal to add the 3, gives us 4, divided by the 8, makes that half. So we need to solve this equation now. Cos to the 4, 3 alpha is equal to half. We're going to fourth root that whole thing. Cos 3 alpha is plus or minus the fourth root of a half. We're going to go to our calculator, and our calculator um, tells us that if we do that, now what do we get for that? Do we get 32.77? Um, Is that right? From the positive root. And the negative root, if you do the inverse cos of the negative of the fourth root of a half, you get minus 147.2 out of that. Now, now we need to think about our other values from this. So that one, um, is that right? Does it give minus 147.2? So if we're thinking about the values that we've got, We'll go to the cast diagram. We've just got um, minus 147.2 would be there. It's also up there, so it also gives us a, a value of 147.2 as well, because that's the places where cos is negative. So we've got 147.2 out of it. So by the time we divide these numbers by 3, Alpha is 10.9, divide that one by 3, and divide that one by 3, we get 49.1 as our second value. That was quite a hard second value to get, wasn't it? Because that's from the negative fourth root, and then using the rearrangement of that top little end. There we go, and that's that. Thanks, Hayley.